The kind of cool thing about the Rasa design is because it's collecting light so fast, you actually don't need to be guiding always. You can get away with normal sidereal tracking in most cases. Well, Dave, thanks for bringing me out here. Um, you brought me out here to check out this uh, Rasa scope. Now, I'm no expert in the Rasa scopes, uh, but from what I know, from what I've read, is that this is the type of scope that you want to get if you just want to do astrophotography, right? That's right. This is a telescope that you actually cannot look through. It only can be looked through by a camera, and the place where the camera goes is kind of different in that it's up at the very front in the prime focus position, as opposed to behind the telescope's right. uh, mirror at the back, like you would normally see on like a schmidt Cassegrain. Mm -hmm. Now this is the Roe Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph. Um, which That's a mouthful. <laughs> it is, it is. The Rasa. And the kind of crazy thing about this is just how fast it is. It's an f2.2 telescope, which so that means like most like like an SCT. I have a Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, it's like a 10 or 11 inch one, and that is an F10, right? right? And this is an F2.2. So what what does that mean? So basically, every time you change the F ratio by uh, basically doubling the amount of light. Now, because we've gone very many F ratios, it's extremely fast when it comes to imaging. And that's because the focal length is that much shorter. That's that right. right. So it's about the same size aperture, but the focal length is shorter so you can get more light. That's right. So this is only 620 millimeters of focal length. Okay. An equivalently sized Schmidt Cassegrain is at about 2,800 millimeters of focal length. The way you calculate the F ratio is you take the focal length of the telescope divided by the aperture of the telescope. So for this telescope, you would take the focal length of 620 millimeters mm -hmm. and divide it by the 279 millimeters of the aperture. Okay, so that gets you the 2.2. That gets you the 2.2. So in other words, uh, compared to my SCT of a similar size, less exposure in order to get the same amount of light and picture. Exactly. That I want, right. Yep. And so you know, for us here in Pennsylvania, we don't get a whole lot of cloudless nights. Yes. And so that time that you have is at a premium. And when you have a Rasa telescope, uh, which does come in three different sizes for three different budgets, right? It comes mm -hmm. in the eight inch. This is the eleven inch. And then there's a thirty six centimeter version, which is approximately 14 inches. Right, right, okay. And with each of those, you get a, from the eight inch to the 11 inch, you're getting about double the amount of light okay. gathering power. And that's just because of the aperture. Mm -hmm. And that big step, you know, also gets you that faster image. Okay. So then what about the focusing? I, I hear there's something special about how, how you focus on this thing. Right, this is the V2 version and it has the ultra stable focus system, which basically means that the mirror in the back here is kept very, very uh, much in place when the telescope is in motion. So if you're looking at one place in the sky, you move to a different place in the sky, the position of the mirror stays the same. Now, if you remember in like a Schmidt Cassegrain, the mirror is actually what is moving to achieve focus. Okay. The same thing is happening here in the Rasa telescope. The mirror is in motion to get focus, but the ultra stable focus system allows it to stay in place in a very, very rock solid way. In this one, the light's coming in, bouncing off the mirror, going through some optics here, bouncing off the mirror and going up to the camera that's up there. Correct. Right now, can that take any DSLR or any type of camera or what? It has a T adapter, which can be adapted to your uh, DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera. And then there's a separate adapter that is a 48 millimeter threaded adapter for your astronomical cameras as well. So yes, you could have all of the different types of camera. And here we have your Canon uh, full frame, mm -hmm. which it can, it can handle that, which is pretty yeah. incredible that it can handle a full frame camera. Um, not all telescopes can do that. This has a very uh, large imaging circle to allow for the cameras up to the very large format sensors to be able to be adapt, you know, adapted onto this. Mm -hmm. And the camera's not actually going to be blocking that much of the light, right? Because right. it already has the sensor up there 
that's blocking some of it. And the camera just adds like a little bit. It's, it's not actually gonna come out in the pictures, right? Right, and even in a Schmidt Cassett grain, you would have that central obstruction as well, and Newtonian's the same way. So let's say I actually go out and get something like this. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry about the chickens. If you're hearing chickens in the background, we, uh, we're out at the farm right now. Yeah, yeah. Getting a nice dark skies, right? <laughs> you got to sacrifice some things. So let's say we go out and, and, and let's say I buy this thing. What kind of mount do I want to put it on or what kind of mount can I put it on? So of course, with the 11 inch, you are going to need a pretty substantial mount to place this on. Um, but the kind of cool thing about the Rasa design is because it's collecting light so fast, you actually don't need to be guiding always. You can get away with normal sidereal tracking in most cases, and that's nice because you can, you know, have a little bit less mount as a result. Now, the weight capacity of the mount needs to be correct for the scope you have. The bigger the scope, of course, the larger the telescope mount, uh, mm -hmm. but the precision of that guy is not required as much as it would be in a normal telescope, especially with an F10 telescope like a Schmidt Cassegrain. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying that this has a very wide field of view. Uh, so is this something that you don't want to use for really small stuff or can you still use it for that really small stuff? Well, because you're collecting so much light, the kind of amazing thing is you can put very high megapixel cameras on the telescope and still collect enough light even though those pixels are very small. And okay. so you effectively can digitally zoom in. So you're right in, there are better options for very small objects, mm -hmm. but you can actually get a pretty impressive digital zoom cropping in, mm -hmm. uh, even with this very wide field. Maybe uh, if we have a chance, we could start to do some of the asteroid uh, searching for ourselves, right? We've got a pretty uh, capable telescope here and mm -hmm. maybe we can discuss trying to get some of the software capable to start looking for asteroids on our own. That would be quite the quite the trek. Well yeah this is the first time I've actually seen a uh, Rasa and it's really cool uh, you know upgrade from from an SCT and I'm actually looking forward to hanging out with you a bit and taking some pictures. I'm looking to see what I can get. And yeah, now that we'll have some time this summer hopefully we have some nice clear skies and out here on the farm we have uh, some really dark skies. We can see some Milky Way. And even, even though we can see Milky Way and it is that dark, I cannot even get away with a 30 second exposure because it is so overexposed. Really? Which is incredible. Nice. That's fantastic. So, so it's gonna make it, make it a really good scope for these guys. Then. And we'll have to come back and show you guys what an image looks like through this telescope in the months to come. Yeah, looking forward to it.